Welcome to the program. Thank you. Good to be here. Great to have you along. How is this going to work? Well, we're using these high-tech solutions to restore these degraded landscapes. It's just an open paddock where there is no trees. Koalas are subject to wild dog attacks. So by getting these high-tech drones, we're able to distribute seed quickly across the landscape and restore these areas so koalas have a safe passage uh, between bushland remnants. So let's just go back half a step. What happened in that particular stretch of land to make it so desolate? Well, as we know, there's been a lot of land clearing over a long period of time. So much land across the east coast of Australia has been cleared for um, cattle grazing and other land uses. And so this area has been subject to cattle grazing for a long time. And it's part of a nature refuge that um, has a really healthy population of koalas. We know there's over 45 koalas here at this nature refuge. Uh, so by restoring this patch of degraded paddock, uh, we're able to create much better habitat for the koalas and safe movement between bushland areas. Yeah, tell me why you opted to go with this technology. We're seeing that drone uh, flying above or well, what is pretty bare land right now. Yeah, as part of WWF's uh, Regenerate Australia program, we're really wanting to trial innovative solutions. So high-tech drones are able to distribute seed a lot faster than we can by planting by hand. So if this trial is successful, we'll be able to use this technology across much of the coast, east coast of Australia and really ramp up our efforts to restore landscapes and uh, help us to address the issues of climate change and especially also the effects of the bushfires that we had in 2019 and 2020. Mm. The, the challenge, of course, with seeds is they take a very long time to grow. So is there a, a uh, other sequence that's going on perhaps with planting trees and native grasses and the like? Yes, as part of WWF's uh, Koalas Forever program, we have a really ambitious target of doubling koala numbers by 2050. So we've got large scale planting programs across the east coast of Australia, particularly at the moment focused in southeast Queensland and the northern rivers, as these are real hot spots that we know where koalas will survive under a changing climate. So we're currently growing an enormous amount of trees and working with farmers and community groups and land care to really restore large areas of habitat for these koalas, which are, have been in massive decline over the last 10 to 20 years. So we need to do everything we can uh, to uh, restore their landscape. Why is it so important to be restoring the landscapes and, and as you say, doubling the number of koalas by 2050? Well... Everyone loves koalas. They're really one of our iconic species. And when we restore habitat for koalas, we're really restoring habitat for a whole range of other species that also live within those habitats. So it's really important to be able to provide a safe and healthy home for the koalas and for all the other wildlife that live, live and need those remnant areas to be able to survive into the future. I reckon there'll be people watching uh, you today, Tanya Pritchard, and wondering what they might be able to do uh, to help to either create or sustain these nature corridors. Absolutely. We're working with a whole range of citizen scientists and farmers and community groups. And if people see a koala, they can uh, record the location of that koala using things like the I Spy Koala app on their phone. Um, or we're also training uh, citizen scientists to help us go out there and find koalas in the landscape. At the moment, we're supporting a uh, large scale regional survey in the Northern Rivers, uh, where we're going out and looking for koala poo or scats. And we're working with a whole range of citizen scientists and farmers to survey over 350 sites across the region to provide really important information about where koalas are, how have they survived bushfires, and how, where to target our restoration efforts into the future. Mm. And just finally, we've got a little bit of time left. You've got $18 million from the federal government. Uh, I reckon that's not, not enough, though, to be able to do the kind of, the volume of work that you're talking about. That's right. So this project that we're delivering with the drones has been supported by the Australian government. And we're also working with the Turner Family Foundation and Dendra Drones. But we really need a whole range of 
uh, other people to come on board and help us to support these really important programs. Tanya Pritchard, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you.